Are you a curious character? Do you have an inquiring mind? Are you a fiend of facts? Maybe you just like learning more about the world around you. If this is you, stay tuned because the books I'm about to show you might be right up your alley. Hi, my name's Natalie and I work at Greater Dandenong Libraries. Today I'm here to tell you all about some fantastic non-fiction books that you can find on our shelves. These ones were some of the ones shortlisted in 2021 for the Eve Powell Award for Information Books. Non-fiction books are great because they help you to learn bigger words and teach you how to read maps and diagrams. You can become an expert about your favourite topics or learn all about new topics. So, are you ready to hear more about the books I have today? Let's get started. First up is Matthew Flinders' Adventures on Leaky Ships, written by Carol Wilkinson and illustrated by Prue Pittock. Matthew Flinders was a brilliant navigator who was determined to map the entire east coast of Australia. In fact, the maps he made from 1795 are so accurate that they're still used today. Flinders lived a short but adventure-filled life. From surviving shipwrecks and scurvy to fighting in battles with the French and being imprisoned as a spy. He even named Australia. Wilkinson brings Flinders alive by including small facts like his favourite book as a child, stories about his little cat Trim and his friendship with his ship's surgeon, George Bass. Don't be fooled by its picture book format. This book is chock full of information about the life of Flinders and is a great read for both kids and adults. Ever wanted to travel to Kakadu National Park? Well, take a look at this book. Dry to Dry, The Seasons of Kakadu is written by Pamela Friedman and illustrated by Liz Anelli. Kakadu is Australia's largest national park covering over 20,000 square kilometres. This book discusses two main seasons, the wet and the dry. But the Indigenous people of Kakadu know that there are actually six seasons. Pamela Friedman uses lively language like crack, hiss, surging and gusty to describe the weather. And it feels almost as if you are there. I love the illustrations. They are breathtakingly beautiful. And there are lots of little things to find on each page from different animals, plants and bugs, to huts and road signs. I found myself poring over the illustrations long after I'd finished reading the book. Next up is Strangers on Country, which is written by David Hartley and Christy Murray and illustrated by Dub Leffler. Imagine that you find a mysterious stranger on your favorite beach. They're pale, starving, and speak a language that you can't understand. What would you do? Despite your fears, you treat them with kindness, you feed them and care for them, and they learn to live on country. This wonderful book follows six European shipwreck survivors and convict escapees who were saved by Indigenous communities during the 1800s. For each episode, there is a story told from the point of view of an Indigenous Australian, then from the survivor's point of view. After this, there is a factual section about the people involved in the story, all drawn from historical accounts. I love how the authors have brought these true stories to life, and I think this book would inspire some fantastic conversations between children and adults about how we can learn from traditional Indigenous ways of living. Have you ever heard of a fish that can do a handstand? Well, the spotted handfish can. You can find out all about this quirky little fish in the book, Hold On, Saving the Spotted Handfish by Gina M. Newton and illustrated by Rachel Trabu. This non-fiction story is told from the point of view of Handstan, who is a cute little handfish. The Spotted Handfish is famous for two reasons. One, they have hands. And two, they are one of the first marine fish in the world to be listed as critically endangered. The spotted handfish are a type of anglerfish that have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. That's a long time. Handfish can't swim, but they get around on their hands, which are really pectoral fins. I love that getting to know handstand made me want to learn more about how I could help this brilliant little animal to survive and thrive. 
There you go. Four fabulous non-fiction books that will get you thinking more about the world we live in. Which one was your favourite? We have all of these non-fiction books and many, many more available for you to borrow from our libraries. So come on down and take a look. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you at the library soon. Bye.